God, you are good, and your mercy endures forever. Oh, thank you, Lord, you cause us to walk in your goodness. No matter where we go, the goodness of God follows us, goes before us. He's always there. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God.
thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that even when we don't see it in the natural, you are working. You are continually working. You never stop working because you're faithful. That if we put our faith on the word of God, that you will go to work on our behalf. You're a faithful father. You are a good, good father. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working.
thank you, Lord. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you. We glorify you, we magnify you, we magnify your name, the name above all names. Jesus, 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 we worship you, we worship you. We worship you. Father, we thank you. We are here to worship your name. We are here, Father, because we want to be in your presence, hear your word. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your love to us. Thank you because you are a way maker where there seems to be no way. Thank you because we can trust in you. We can confidently take steps of faith Father and know that you will be there so we give you all praise and all glory today Lord we welcome you into our lives into our hearts and to our service and we trust that your word will bless us and edify us today give you all praise and all glory to you Lord thank you in Jesus name Amen glory to God Amen you know, as the song says, he is our way maker. Amen. And even where there was no way in him, now there is a way. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, praise God. Let me tell you, you are here in the right place and you will be blessed today. Amen. So turn to your neighbor as you take your seat and tell them your way maker is here. So expect a miracle. <laughs> Praise God. Glory be to God. We are excited for today. Amen. The word is going to go forth. The spirit of God will address what we need. Praise God. I have a few announcements for you, and then we will continue with the service. Uh, the first one that I have, uh, we want to let you know, is tonight is Family Fellowship Night. So what does that mean if it's uh, your first service? Uh, we invite you to go to that cafe after the service. Uh, we uh, have uh, some specials, uh, food for purchase, and we get there and fellowship and you know, get to know our brothers and sisters. So we look forward to seeing you there. Uh, the specials tonight are cheeseburgers, hamburgers, hot dogs, and popcorn. So there's always something for everybody. Amen. Uh, we're going to be open up to 30 minutes after the service. So we look forward to seeing you there. Um, also, we want to let you know, uh, for those who are in the Next Level group, the Next Level Advanced 2023 is coming up here pretty soon. It'll be September 8th through September 10th. So, hey month month and a half at the most praise god so with that we want to let you know if you are in that group the final payment of 80 dollars per person along with payments for extra amenities are due this sunday august 20th so praise god we have a full supply amen uh to do this uh, you can do it you can register and prepay at everlyministries.org under passcode next level event okay if there's any questions you can see you can email brother andre echoes praise god <laughs> Um, also, we want to let you know on Saturday, August 26th, uh, we're going to be having an awesome maintenance work day. What does that mean? We invite you to come and join us. We need your help. Amen. So we're looking for, for people who are skilled in maintenance or repairs. Uh, those are some of the tasks we're going to be doing around our campus. So um, there is a sign-up sheet in the hospitality foyer. It's available in there. If you can add your name and then we'll see you here, it would be a great blessing. If you can do this by this coming Wednesday, August 23rd, uh, it would be a blessing. Now, let me tell you, I sometimes say, if you can follow direction on this one, right? Well, I'll tell you why. I, in the beginning, I wanted to come, but I knew nothing about maintenance or repairs and things like that. But as I came, I learned so much. Amen. So, and, and those were skills that I can take home and do as well in there. So if for some reason you have the willingness and you're able to come on over and if you follow the direction, you're going to be blessed. Okay. So we look forward to seeing you there. 
Uh, also, Sunday, August 27th is going to be our Advancement Sunday. What does that mean? Uh, parents, if you have a child entering first, fourth, or seventh, or seventh grade, uh, they will begin in their new classroom. So um, if you have any questions, uh, please let Ms. Jennifer Rothwell, she can help you with that. But uh, it's light and easy. Amen? Amen. Wonderful. Now, the forerunners are getting ready. Uh, hey! <laughs> On fire. Amen. <laughs> so Saturday, September 9th, uh, they will be going to the Allen's Apple Orchard. Fun activity. Oh, man, I wish I could join them for that. Praise God. <laughs> so if you're in that group, 55 and above, or your, your spouse is 55 and above, don't miss it. Don't miss it because it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, the cost is only $7. <laughs> and uh, the payments are going to be done at the Allen, uh, Allen's Apple Orchard. So uh, the only thing you need to do for this activity is please register online at everlyministries.org with the passcode Forerunners Event. If you can do this by September 6th, that would greatly help us. Amen. So that we can plan accordingly. And uh, <laughs> on this one, you know, in Spanish, when you, instead of saying on fire, you say alive. People are alive. Well, that doesn't translate too well. So, <laughs> we're on fire, praise God. <laughs> um, now, uh, the next announcement is uh, the Divine Healing and Health for today class, or the class on Divine uh, Healing and Health, is going to be offered during this fall. So, uh, we encourage you to take it. Uh, if you haven't taken it, or if you have taken it, you know what a blessing it is. You can take it again. You know, we don't have to wait until symptoms show up or, you know, we need it in our family to be able to go. It will always bless us and edify our faith, and that way we can be a blessing to the people around us. So this class is going to be available from, on Sundays uh, from September 10 to December 10 at 8.45 in the morning. And then uh, the uh, required reading is going to be Pastor Devi's book, Divine Healing and Health for Today. Wonderful book as well. Amen. Available in the bookstore for you. And uh, the key here is uh, please register online if you can do it by Wednesday, September 6th. That would be a great blessing as well. Now, uh, this fall also, the Getting a Grip on the Basics class is going to be offered. Great, tremendous blessing. I don't know how many times I took that class. The first time they told me, I thought, oh, I'll go. I mean, I've been a Christian for a while, so I might know some of this stuff. Well, I got a lot of light, and I was so thankful that I went to it. And, and after that, I took it multiple times. So I encourage you to go and take it. You know, if for some reason you haven't taken it in some years, I encourage you to go and take it again. Amen. So uh, with that said, uh, classes also start Sunday, September 10 through December 10, 8.45 a.m. in the Family Center uh, in the Trailblazers room. And uh, to register for this class, you can visit the SOFFC events page at everlyministries.org. And you can register in there. Um, and if you can do it also by Wednesday, September 6th, would be awesome. Now, uh, with this class, we follow the book of Getting a Grip on the Basics uh, workbook. Uh, it's available in the bookstore if you're going to be taking it, and the discounted price is $5. So go, go and get it, and it'll be a blessing to you. Uh, a key item for, for you for this class, if you're attending, the first uh, day of class, uh, make sure you come back with Chapter 1 filled out, you know, if you went over it. It's a great devotional that can help you that way. So uh, make sure that you bring it complete so that you're not behind trying to figure out what happened. What are they talking about? <laughs> but you are fully on board. Amen? Amen. That way we can build, we can come with our faith and add to it. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Now, Book of the Summer, Bible Prayer Study Course. Amazing, amazing guide as well. Amen? So uh, let's finish strong. Let's finish, finish it all up. Amen? And... Uh, you know, that way we don't have to try to guess what kind of prayer we have to do, and we know what we need to do with clarity. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And uh, the last announcement that I have for you is the uh, Spirit of Faith Bible Training Center, the uh, online Bible school. Great blessing. If for some reason you haven't taken it, if you, you know, don't know much about it, it would greatly bless you. You know, it says in here, these courses will also prepare those who sense a call into the fivefold ministry absolutely will you know they will be a great blessing to you uh, these th there are two years of classes that are available you can take them you can do it as a self-study or a more organized um, 
uh, quarterly program. So either way is available to you. For that, you can go to sofbtc.org and uh, be blessed. So those are all the announcements. Praise God. Well, good evening. I have to tell you that I was, um, Juan was in our first class, yeah. and he was a very good student. <laughs> I think you got an A+. Plus. <laughs> well, it's good to see everyone tonight. I know that if there's any visitors here, I'm not Pastor Debbie, I'm not Pastor Jay. My name is Ann Armstrong, and um, they've asked me to stand in for them tonight and minister the word to you, so it's just a great honor to be in this pulpit. They are taking some much needed time to rest and refresh, like Pastor Debbie said, times of refreshing and having a little fun in the mountains of Colorado. So um, they're enjoying themselves and then they'll be back real soon. So uh, it, what time is it? Prosperity. Prosperity time? It is. Praise the Lord. And so I want to read a um, Psalm 1 to you. And you say, what does this have to do with the offering? It has a lot. And the ushers are in the aisle with envelopes for those of you that still do it the, the Carlos way. <laughs> I don't. So, um, but I want to read to you Psalm. I'm going to start in verse 1. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the ways of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but he delights in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in their season. His leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. So, Honoring God, delighting in the law of God is connected to our prosperity. It's connected to our well-being. And so when we come and we are delighted, you know, I, we delight. Carlos and I will get excited. It's like, wow, that's a big tide check. Or, you know, God impresses on our heart to give a certain amount. We get excited about it. It's not like you got to pull it out of our hand. It's like, oh, praise the Lord. It's offering time. It's giving time. It's tithing time. Because it's a heart to want to obey, but it's also a joy and a delight to give. You know, the world doesn't think that way, but, but because our minds are renewed. And so his delight, my delight is in the law of God and what it's done for my life. And that we have a local church that we can come to. And we can bring our tithes. We can bring our offerings. We can sit and receive from the teaching of the word. And um, so, you know, the, the uh, living, the living Bible says, but they delight in doing everything God wants them to do. And day and night are always meditating on his laws and thinking about the way to follow him more closely. They are like trees along a riverbank bearing luscious fruit. I don't want to put these on because they mess with this. And have season without fail without fail when we are faithful in our tithes and offerings we can know that God is faithful to provide for all of our needs he is I mean I, I'm, I'm of this the forerunner's age and I, he's never let me down and you know he, he'll say be it unto you according to your faith so I do, as I develop my faith that prosperity only increases because I I am meditating in his law. I'm delighting in his law. So um, let's just real quickly go to 2 Corinthians. And I'm going to read this in the Amplified because I love it. You know, it's a choice. It's not, um, I don't, I don't, well, gosh, I don't, I got all these bills due and I got this going on and I got that going on and we got, and the kids are going back to school. No, it's a choice. It's a dis no, it says first, bring the first fruits. And don't even, don't even think, don't even, you know, we just learn to do that. And I know that everybody here has already got as in that place and in that stage, but you know, it's always good to hear it again. It always is good to hear the word again. So let me read um, 
2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7, it says, Let each one, as he is made up in his own mind and purpose in his heart. See, God doesn't want you giving because somebody's holding a, a hammer over your head. Let each one give as he is made up in his own mind and purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or with, under compulsion, under pressure, under manipulation. For God loves, he takes pleasure in and prizes above other things and is unwilling to abandon or do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt-to-do giver whose heart is in his giving. A prompt-to-do giver. Um, you know, I was able to, to bless somebody recently with something and, and it was just not, a, the Lord prompted me. It was just like, the, 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 there were these things that I had and I was going to get rid of them and then I just thought you know what maybe maybe they would just like it but and then I felt kind of like oh, you know it's used and it's you know it was mine and you know but the, but I felt that prompting and I cannot they when I when I blessed them with it they they almost cried because they said this is exactly what I want and do you know how much that I got more blessed? Because number one, I followed the prompting. Because I was trying to dismiss it like, oh, you know, you know, you just felt kind of, you should be giving them brand new stuff. But I hadn't used this in years and there was nothing wrong with it. It was, it was nice stuff. But, you know, so the enemy comes in and tries to dismiss. And when I saw the joy on this person's, they... I was like, are you kidding? I was actually, because I was kind of like, oh, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but if you don't, that's fine. I, I'll, I'll just take it back. But, you know, it was that prompting. And, you know, pastor's been teaching us so much on that. So I like that what it says here, prompt to do. Maybe I wasn't really quickly prompt to do, but I did it. I did it. And um, so, you know, and it says whose heart is in his giving. And my, my heart was in it, but I wasn't sure, you know, you know, you could just kind of check yourself. But a cheerful giver is an attitude. It really is a decision. It's how we decide to give. And, you know, I would encourage you when you come in to service, you give on purpose. Give with a purpose. Give with, um, you're sowing, listen, in this place, you're sowing into good ground. But you have to use your faith and your words to reap a harvest off that. Now, we know that the tithe is in, in full obedience. But on top of that, our giving, we, that's, we can demand a harvest off that. But hey, I'd rather live on the 90% than try to make it on the 100%. So even that we rejoice in. And you say, well, yeah, but you know, I just had this bill and that bill. No, no, no. No, we give in faith. We give with joy. And so we're going to give tonight. We're going to give with joy because we are prompt to do, prompt to obey. And it's so exciting. You know, I, I sometimes get to talk to people that they don't have a church. I mean, I, listen, we are going to honor and do what we need to do because we don't know what it's like not or or maybe you know it's 300 miles away or you know for whatever reason a church like this there's churches but not one like this so so are you are you ready are you ready to give hold up your offering hold up your phone that's what i do now and i do what like pastor jay said just kerplunk it so father we thank you we praise you it is our joy and is our delight to come into this place tonight and to give to give our tithes, to give our offerings, Father. And we, we just stand up right now. Stand up with me. And we say, and we hold up our offering to you, that we give with a heart full of gratitude and joy and love for you. And we thank you, Father, that you've given us a church. You've given us a place that we can come and hear your word preached, that our lives are not the same. And so we thank you. And we do this out of obedience because your word says it, but we do it be out of love and appreciation. It is an act of our worship for you. So we say it comes back to us. 
pressed down, shaken together, and men give into our bosom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, go ahead and pass the buckets. Praise the Lord. glory to God. Welcome. We want to welcome everybody watching on live stream. Um, uh, Pastor Jay and Pastor Debbie are not here this evening. My name is Ann Armstrong and thank you for tuning in. We're going to ask you to uh, click the love button, the like button, subscribe, and whatever else there is to do. We just um, so appreciate you tuning in. We know that there's many people watching live stream, and it's going to be good. You're going to be fed the word of God tonight. So thank you all. Well, praise the Lord. It's good to see you all. Good crowd out there tonight. Hallelujah. Um, I have something a little different tonight. Um, I don't know how this is going to go, but it's going to be, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it. Um, I want to, you know, I am one that always likes to look back at things that pastors have said. And, uh, and that's part of being a watcher. That's part of going back and, and knowing how to pray for them, how to, you know, just have my heart knit to theirs. And so I'm always liking to kind of put things together, you know, back even things that um, with that, when Dr. Dufresne was here, that they've gone through so many seasons since they've been here pastoring. And it's just been a joy and a delight to see what God has done. You know, we say, oh, what God has done in us, but also what God has done in them and their example and their faithfulness you know, the standard that they have set here in Cedar Rapids and continuing to. So I um, went back, and it was in um, camp meeting of 2021. And um, Pastor shared some things. It was the Sunday after that he shared some things about that camp meeting. And so we just had this camp meeting, and, but I want to share and remind you of some of the things he said. And he talked about, and you all know this, that a number of years ago, there came an angel into the service. And he was walking, or I'm sorry, Jesus himself was walking up and down the aisles. And he was checking. He was looking to see how were we doing? What was the condition of the church? And I remember Pastor saying, you know, like he was looking to see if people were taking notes or playing a game on their their devices and um, looking to see if people were taking notes or playing or just you know sitting there staring into space looking at the lights and um, so Colossians 2 19 let's go there that's kind of our launching pad here And it says not, whoop, i got to get in the King James. Hang on. And it says not, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands have nourishment ministered and knit together increases with the increase of God. And, and the increase, increasing with the increase of God. And there is an increase with God because that's what he does. He's always increasing. But that means there's an increase with man. You know, it's like we go from glory to glory, faith to faith, that there's always that flow of, when you're with God, there's always that flow of increase. And that, how does that increase come? It comes through our spiritual leaders 
but it comes through us it comes through us coming tonight showing up being hungry and wanting to hear the word it comes through um, pastors preparing pastors putting things in order in the church the increase comes remember we talked about divine order God's order I love order I'm not always in order though but I you know well you know what though I learned from Pastor Nancy that's lifelong you're always putting things in order you know you, you, you know like Kenneth Hagin would say you, you got to get up and comb your hair every day it gets out of order <laughs> and a lot of other things so um, you know when we sit under this teaching and under our pastors things in our lives come into order and you know none of us have arrived but we get better at cooperating with the word renewing our mind growing in the things of God and but then what happens is the result of that and that word is we become a part of this family and our hearts are knit to our pastors but to each other and God has truly made us a church family and and so then it becomes a joy and a delight we're not just coming here for to, to be taught mentally taught we are here for a divine purpose God sent our pastors here for a divine purpose we are part of that divine purpose and so what's our part in that our part is to bring our supply and that means you come and you know initially people come and they, we just want them to come and hear the word is this where God has placed you as it says in the Bible or is it um, you know some come and they go some think it is and they say it is but then they decide that you know yeah he's kind of harsh or you, you want me to be there at what time you want me to serve you know <laughs> you know and um, they, but you know what honestly it is they just don't understand it see they don't have light on it they don't understand what a joy that it is was it a joy serving in camp meeting it was it was did we work hard well it's good for you it's good for us but but when we come together and we have this united purpose given by our pastors it is a joy and it's a delight and um so pastor said this um well first corinthians 3 6 it says i have planted a palace water but god gave the increase God does he gives the increase he gives the increase to those that are faithful and does that mean he doesn't care about the ones that aren't no but we have to cooperate we have to cooperate with his word with his will where he's placed us and then we have to bring something and it matters so um, he made this comment about camp meeting in 2021 he says it was the Wednesday night service. I can look at some of you and know you'll all remember this service. And he said that was the strongest healing anointing that ever took place in this church. I just, and I would recommend you go back and watch it. And I'm not saying, well, yes, this last company was wonderful, but these, some of these things he said, we see a progression. In watching it, I have seen the progression. It was two years ago. And um, we're, we're pressing to go further. To, to create this house where God can have his way fully and so it's the increase of God just like when he was walking up and down the aisles looking can I trust them will they take will they will they care for the, what I have for them can I go further with them can, but you know what with that comes more responsibility with that comes greater consecration but listen that's that's a good thing that's for our benefit because we could become more skilled we become better at what we're doing we learn how to walk in love oh my goodness the things that we get out of this our marriages our families our children it it changes everything and you know in my heart I and I know pastors you know we wish that more people would get that you know when they when they start coming and part of our, part of that is our responsibility to help you know until they're nourished up and they make that connection because the body of Christ at large that's really not real a thing you know 
And so, um, but preparation. Preparations always have to be made, don't they? If you're going to have, you know, your relatives over for Thanksgiving dinner, do you have to do something? You know, you got to go to the store. You got to buy some food. Maybe, hopefully, you'll clean your house. You know, you'll get out your best dinnerware and set an elaborate table. You make huge plans. You got grocery lists, and then you got lists. <laughs> I get the privilege of working with Teresa. We have so much fun. Okay, this, 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 this. And, you know, she's so organized. She's got a manual. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that is awesome because it makes it easy you know you just go to the you go to the okay thanksgiving dinner here it is Etta does that too where is she she's here somewhere yeah and um so that things are in order and so when you pr prepare and make preparation as we did recently but you know we have for years dr Dufresne back in the days dr Dufresne would come to our meetings and um, we had marvelous meetings, but we were a lot younger then, and we kind of stumbled through some things. But see, year after year, we got better. Because year after year, we would prepare, and then we'd go, oh, yeah, okay, we need to make that change, that correction, you know. And we got better at what we did, how we did it, how that, pa okay, pastors want it done this way. Okay, we'll make that adjustment. And we'll always be doing that. There's always adjustments. And um, so... It's a fact in the Bible that increase in any area is always preceded by preparation. Let's start with, you know, I mean, we could go back to Genesis, but I'm going to start with John the Baptist. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make paths, his paths straight. That was a huge, that was a, he was called by God to prepare the way to bring people position people into repentance he was baptizing them he was declaring he was preparing them for the coming messiah and then jesus showed up and and jesus said baptize me and john was like i can't do that but it had to be done because it was the, the divine order of god and so there was preparation made john prepared for the entrance of the Messiah, for his ministry. You know, Jesus prepared for how many? 30 years? For three and a half years of ministry? That's a lot of years of preparation. You might say, what took him so long? What takes us so long? <laughs> but there is, there is preparations that we make individually and preparations that we make corporately. And so when you prepare individually and you, you know, like again, your house gets in order and you have certain assignments and then you come corporately, we all move together as one. And um, so Pastor Jay, this, this, he was saying that the Lord said to him about this camp meeting in 2021, okay, because we just heard that he was very blessed by 2023. I didn't look up 2022, so. Um, but the preparation, God said this to pastor, the preparation that you have made all these years at planting the seed and establishing the church on the word, teaching them about the move of the spirit, demonstrating the move of the spirit, has allowed what happened in camp meeting to happen. And he said, I'm telling you, what happened Wednesday night is a big deal it's the spirit in the spirit that's a big deal and you'll understand if you go back and watch that service because pastor nancy couldn't even you know she ministered to you and everything just kind of stopped and the, the the presence of god we were we prepared a house we prepared a place that the holy spirit could move and she later thanked pastor because of that because she was able to go further Listen, a, 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 a pastors, a minister that comes, they can only go as far as we will allow. And it only takes a few to start pushing back, pushing back, and it hits them in the face. And then that squelches the anointing. Well, how come we didn't? How come they didn't? How, do, how come? We have a responsibility, and that is our part. And that's why it matters how we come. That's why it matters of how we prepare to come. How do, you, how do you prepare to come to church? How do you prepare Saturday night for Sunday morning? Do you take time to pray for the services? 
you know, do you lay out your clothes and, you know, get your kids all lined up and ready to go? Um, because you do that for work. And I know everybody here does those things, but I'm just saying that we have to remind ourselves of these things so we don't grow slack. So um, he said this, and that's only the beginning of some things. And that's part of what I want to get to. We will see a service before we leave this building, and he said this before, where, the, well, the building really almost was full, this, this last camp meeting, where the apparatuses are left, people walk out healed. We're, that, that's, the direct, that's what God desires. If you knew his heart... He desires that. But if he's not welcome or there's, a, there's hindrances. But remember what he said. He said it in 2021 and he said it this year. He said there was unity. And that's always been a big thing that I have prayed for is unity. And I'm sure you all have too. But, you know, because pastors can only go so far. They need us to be in unity. with. And, you know, he just preached on walking in love. And it's like, that's a ringy-dingy moment, is walk in love with the people in your department. Walk in love at home. Because it's, you know, we just have a thing. It's, it's too expensive. It's too expensive for me to be offended at you. It could cost me my life. And so I don't have time for it, you know. And if I get in that place... Be quick to repent because, you know, you, you do give in to the flesh once in a while. So, but he said camp meeting was increase. He says we were able to receive that move of God because of the preparation that we made for it. Two areas, helps ministry and unity of the congregation to form a spiritual house. Now, you'll say, well, yeah, that, yeah, he just told us that on this last one. But we need to go back and look. We need to go back and say, because it's like, oh, yeah, that was a wonderful camp meeting. And then you kind of, you know, got to take a break. Got to get some rest. We rest as we run, yeah. you know. The joy of the Lord is our rest. Yeah. Um, I heard, I think it was, um, well, it was Pastor Craig Field said that Pastor Nancy said that um, rest isn't sleep. Rest is being in the spirit. The, the restoration you need sleep but but that's for the natural what we're talking about is that spiritual strength is taking time to get quiet before God wait on the Lord refresh yourself in the word um, you know and and all the things that you know we've been taught and so um, and the unity that has formed around the move of the spirit which is based on the word that created the right atmosphere was the unity around the move of the Spirit. In 2017, God told Pastor Jay to, um, they, th this congregation is established in the Word. It's time to train them up in how to move with the Spirit. And that is just contrary to everything that's natural, you know. It's, it's something that ha they have to take time to teach, to demonstrate, to be examples, to pull on us. It, it takes us to be hungry, to desire that, to understand it, to want to flow in that, you know, and, um, and we've grown and we've gotten better at that. But there is so much more. Like he said here, it's, it's, this is the beginning. This is the beginning. And, um, you know, one of the things that stood out to me this year was that the team that came, in the past, we haven't had, you know, I think we've had Reverend Phillips come, and, and I mean, it's all been wonderful, but there was a lot to have the worship school, prayer school with the Ramoses. There was so much imparted to us in those meetings, and I don't want us to forget that, and I want us to, you know, just, you almost have to hold on to it because it can slip away. You get busy, you get mental, and it's like, okay, that's done. Now what's, what's next? And, um, and, you know, we do have to roll that way. What's next? Because we're rolling, and it's all good. But, you know, I, that I remember, and I always remember this, never let your congregation take a break from stretching their faith. 
because the flesh is what wants to take the break. But somebody getting saved depends on us doing what we're supposed to be doing or healed, deliver from oppression. It is true. Um, so, yes, she said to Pastor that she was thanking uh, us for preparing a place where healing could move like in this city. And he said that wasn't Pastor Day talking. She was just the mouthpiece. That was the head of the church talking to this congregation. That came out of the heart of God. I want to encourage you in those things. What I'm saying, what I want to say is, let's be excited about what God's doing here. Let's, um, you know, for, for Pastor to say that, I mean, I almost cry when I think about that. That came out of the heart of God. Thank you. Thank you. I'm longing. I'm looking. I'm searching. And I'm so glad that you allowed me to come and have my way. And, um, and listen, this is the big thing. We want that on Sunday and on Wednesday. Now, we have practiced on those times, and that's good. So we just keep moving, and we, because that's where we become skilled, is bringing that supply. Taking the word that Pastor Jay and Pastor Debbie are teaching us, like on Sunday, Pastor Debbie, how to be led by the Spirit. That, that is so foundational in where we're going, is how to be led, how the inward witness, when the Holy Spirit starts talking to us about something, and what we're to do with that. Such examples. And they're so transparent. Um, but he said the glory didn't just come here. Jesus came here and inspected the troops. But I believe he was pleased with what he saw. That doesn't mean we have our lives all together. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I don't want to be you know, asked to leave. <laughs> We, we all have areas we're consecrating ourselves and crucifying the flesh too. But God was pleased with the unity. He was pleased with the corporate house. When God is pleased, he shows it. Amen. He manifests himself. We've seen that more and more happening in our services. Don't think God is pleased when nothing is happening. Now, that doesn't mean every service we run around the aisles or, you know, it, it means that we're all in. What do you got today, God? We're going to work with you. We're here. We're bringing our supply. We're pulling on the anointing. Whatever. Okay, pastor's going this way. Let's go. Let's bring it. Let's help. You know, when he sometimes mentions, you know, somebody looking at you out there and you look like you're not happy to be here, you know, that doesn't help. Just put a smile on your face. And, you know, we don't hear that much anymore, but I know we used to. Because we've grown. We've, we've grown and we've developed. And there's an, listen, what else is there out there? What, I mean, what, what is taking place in this ministry? Is ex we got 26 kids saved. Well, the anointing did. And BBS last week. We should get really excited about that. That is a big deal. At camp meeting this year, a little 13-year-old girl, grandma comes in with her, and, and she, grandma comes to me and says, okay, you know, she wants to get filled with the Holy Spirit. It's the first meeting. It's the beginning of service. And I go, okay, we'll, we'll get someone to help her because I was had to be in the back room. She got filled with the Holy Ghost and left here speaking in tongues. Full of joy. 13 years old. Changes her life. It matters. It matters how we come. It matters, you know, people come and they have requests. Yeah, yeah. They have needs. Yeah. And we do what we can, given by the direction of our pastor because of the divine order. Yeah. And so um, he said, there will be activity where God will show, that where God shows up and he shows out. Yeah. It's him honoring us because we are honoring him yes. so I want to encourage all of us to, to just keep let's keep let's keep let's keep let's keep because some things are coming and there's going to be rearranging and some you know and it's not for me to say I don't know but pastor you know he's going to lead us and guide us and direct us 
But, you know, one thing I've learned in serving in helps ministry is you've got, well, even in life, you've got to, okay, adjust. Constant adjustments. You're driving the car. It's like, okay, yep, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. And, and really, that's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a skill. And not get an attitude, you know. And it's like, well, yeah, but you told me to do this. No, now we're doing this. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's all good because it's for a divine purpose. And God has put that purpose in our pastor's heart. So um, as a congregation, you honor the spirit to have his way. And so he honors the unity of our heart for his plan and for the unity of our faith for his plan and not the plan of men. So this, and then he said during this, because I listened to the service, he says, as he's talking, that's why I encourage you, go back and listen to it. He says, this has a spirit of prophecy about it, what he was saying. And just he, came, he got under the anointing as he was sharing this. And um, he... Uh, it was similar to what he was saying this last year, but he went into, he took the whole service. He says, you know, he referred to Moses back in Exodus 3, where he was out tending to his father-in-law's sheep, and he saw the burning bush. And Moses turned aside and gave his attention to God and what God was saying. And in that time, Moses was got the, the next phase of the plan that God has for his life because he turned aside he turned his attention away from tending the sheep and he focused on what God was saying in the heart of the father and so sometimes when you know pastors get up and say we're, we're going to do this we need to turn aside and hear what he's saying hear from the heart of the father and and um Sometimes, you know, you know, like when he's first presented that we, God told him we're going to, there's more for your ministry down here in Kansas City. We're like, what? Well, listen, he did too. But he's willing and obedient. And he knows, he's skilled, and he knows when he hears from God. And nothing is going to change that, that he is going to obey God. How are we going to do that? He's told us, I don't know. But steps, 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 steps. It's always steps. It's always steps of faith. You know, and I mean, they have, they have, they are so skilled in these things. You know, it was remember the summer we were going to build on the land. And uh, he said, yeah, we need to take the summer and just Monday, Monday prayer. We're going to pray. We're going to spend the summer praying about this. We did. Praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, you should think back to that. Like, because then it was like, hold off. I won't go into the details. That a church will be built there. It's still there. The land's still there, not going anywhere. But God had other things in mind. And so we just like adjust. We adjust. We make the adjustments. And I you know, I just sense there's gonna be adjustments coming up, but we have gotten skilled at it and we're good at it. And we're gonna bring our supply to it. And we're gonna do it with great joy. And, and really, we, we have been doing that, but we continue to do it, and we strengthen one another. Amen. And, um, you know, I think of Gideon, and he got down to 300 men, and it's like, this is a big project, you know. Well, you know what? We go to the prayer room, and we say, Lord, we need laborers. We need help. We, we, you know, we do that all the time with the daycare. We need help. The right people. The right people with the right hearts. And so... When God moved, saw Moses move toward his plan to his life, God moved toward him and began to talk to him. We have to turn from what we might think is God's plan or what we think is our plan and our ideas and look to him and be willing and obedient. And sometimes that means laying down my plans and listening submitting yourself and what you're who are you submitting yourself you're submitting yourself to God because he's the one that put the, the under shepherds in the church to oversee to lead to guide to teach and then he said the con this congregation is going into the next phase of God's plan another phase of the anointing and that's why I you know that stood out to me because 
that was, those, that was a wonderful camp meeting. And this was a wonderful camp meeting. But there was an uptick this year. I don't know if you, there were, I just, I think there was a, it was a lighter, smoother, there was just, because we've become more skilled at what we're doing, but also because we are, our hearts are with the plan. And we want to keep that flowing. We want, we have that, we, we have now, um, we have the heart of the Father for what God's wanting to do. But again, it's going to take some adjusting as we go forward and all the things that, you know, pastors don't lack for vision. But that's because God doesn't lack for vision. God is looking. God is desiring to move on the earth. God is desiring to have churches that have the atmosphere where he can come and move and then people can get saved people can come and get healed they can be nourished up in the word and mature just like we have been and that's what I sometimes I that's what I think oh my goodness we're so blessed to have this because my life would not look the same it's far better and so this he says this congregation is going into the next phase of God's plan for the and another phase of the anointing that was in 2021 and that's the piece that I, I saw this year is that we came together. Everybody was doing something. Everybody had a good attitude. Everybody did it with joy. And, you know, there might have been a few bumps, but if you, there were, we didn't see them. They were dealt with and they were dealt, they were taken care of. And, you know, and it was a lot more because we had the afternoon sessions, but it was a delight. We were excited about it. And to honor these ministers, that was the one thing that really stood out. You know, we see the ministers, they come. And you know what? They, they're coming to be refreshed. They're coming to hear from Pastor Nancy, Pastor Jay, Pastor Debbie, Pastor Ike, Reverend Ellis. And, and they were. And it's so wonderful. I, I, I just, that just blesses me more than anything. Because they're taking that back to their churches. And they're strengthened. They receive impartations. They receive revelations. That's what this is all about. Right, yes. Is getting the church built up yes. where the shepherds can feed the sheep yes. in the word and the move of the spirit. Yes. That's the assignment on our pastor's life. To raise ministers up. To bring them together. And so that they can be nourished up in the word. They need each other. They need each other. And then they need the leaders, Pastor, Pastor Nancy. You know, when she gets up and she ministers, but Dr. Dufresne always said, and I just kept thinking about this in camp meeting, is teams. There'll be teams going out. And I thought, here we are. I always thought it was overseas, but here we have a team. Each one, each one bringing a supply. Each one bringing a, 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 their anointing and them flowing together as one. That's a beautiful thing to see. So... God wants to use corporate groups of believers where we come together in one accord. And the, in this service, he talked about, remember the wave after wave after wave after wave of healing in the room? And then she stood over here and she'd say, anybody that needs healing? And, and people just felt the wave of it. And um, so he wants to use ministers like Pastor Jay, Pastor Debbie, Pastor Nancy, many of them, but this is what he said. He wants to use this congregation. God has prepared this congregation to be an example church so that people can come and receive, but ministers can come too. And young ones can come and be raised up to be able to go out. You know, Maya and Andre just moved. You know, they got that in their heart. God led them. They, they obeyed the prompting. That's just not a willy-nilly, you know, Pastor Ike and Pastor Gerilyn. They, you know, if you would have asked Pastor Ike in the early years when he was here, oh, yeah, you're going to go to Nigeria? Oh, he would have laughed at you. It was a revelation to him when he got it, and his wife helped him, you know. And so, um, and so the, the, the plan is great. The plan is expansive, and it's increase. It's increase. And and we are increasing. But with the increase comes responsibility. So I want to 
God needs your agreement on this, about this, this house, this church. He needs us to agree with the plan. He needs us to say yes and, um, and be willing to adjust whatever is needed to, to do, whatever we need to do. You know, it was an amazing thing when we went through derecho. We knew how to do it. Well, maybe we didn't, but we figured it out. We had right people in the right places, and, and um, look at us now. I mean, I remember Pastor Jay standing there saying that the data care is going to come out ahead in this. And they did. And they did. Amen. But the church came out ahead, too. Amen. And so um, we know how to work together. We know how to put. People come, and they're so impressed in how we do things. And it's like, it's normal, isn't it? Don't you do that? Isn't it that way everywhere? But pastors need us to think right about this. It's about the divine plan of this ministry. Increase always precedes preparation. And so we're going to, we continue to prepare. We continue to prepare. And, you know, they're, 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 um, you know, remember it goes back to what are the three things? Can anybody name them for me? Traveling ministry, planning churches, social media. And at prayer on Monday, we were talking about, I just mentioned it, and I thought, we have increased in all three of those. All three of those. And pastor brought that to the congregation two years ago. So, because we've been speaking it, we've been praying over it, we've been calling it in, and um, things, are, things are just moving. So Jesus prepared for 30 years. Pastor Jay is, and Pastor Debbie have prepared this congregation for 20 years for this next phase. And, you know, we're already in the phase, but he has prepared us. So on Sunday, August 6th, he talked about going through the door. We're going through a door. And at the door, there's adversaries. So if he, or 1 Corinthians 16, 9, let's go there. I've got some scriptures for you tonight. Just give me a chance to. I got a lot, actually. It says, but a great and effectual door is opened unto me, and there are many adversaries. Adversary means those who oppose you. But God was leading Paul through doors to the church of Ephesus. A large door of opportunity and effectual service means for ministry. A door of service in the kingdom of God. Man can't open the door. Only the Lord can open it. And because of the faithfulness of our pastors and what they've done, that door has been opened unto them. You know, um, just using the church plant in Kansas City, it's because they've been faithful, because he, God can trust them. They're trustworthy. That if I, if I tell them I have more for your ministry, he's going to keep listening, and he's going to keep listening until he gets it clear. And then he's going to go down there and start praying more, and then he's going to start looking at buildings. He's taking all those steps. There's a lot of preparation <laughs> that goes into this. And so it goes back to Luke 2.52, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in the favor of God and man. And, you know, Jesus increased. Jesus had to grow and develop in wisdom and stature. That's what we're doing. And then in Luke 4, it says, Jesus went into the wilderness. This, then this is, this is the thing. Jesus went into the wilderness full of the Holy Ghost, right? Full of the Holy Ghost. But he returned from the wilderness after being tempted for 40 days in the power of the Spirit. And he was strong. He was developed. And then he, that was the, that was the beginning, really, of his ministry, because then in Luke 4, 18, he was talking about, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And... Um, so we're going through a door, a great and effectual door. Every new door comes with a greater degree of opposition. But we're sober. We're sober-minded about it. Well, what does that mean? doesn't matter. We have dominion. We have authority. But what are we supposed to be doing while we're knowing that we're going through a door and when that opposition does try to present itself? Well,
Let's start next, 6, verse 7. Because increase is a big deal to God. He's waiting on the precious fruit of the earth. And it is a big deal. And I always think about, you know, Carlos and I, when we used to teach in faith racers or even before that, and um, even now, you know, with the daycare, it's like we could be, we could have the next Pastor Jay, the next Pastor Debbie, the next Pastor Nancy, the next Smith Wigglesworth in that class with us. God's, the daycare, God sends those children, you know? He sends them to us because it was his plan. It was his purpose. So, you know, you, you have to value and see this next generation and what the plans that God has for us and how are we handling it? Are we faithful in handling it? Are we increasing and developing these children? And, you know, we see families come and sometimes it's like, you know, young people, they get married and they start having babies. How many people do we have pregnant now? A lot of them. And, but, yeah, a lot, not me. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's, it's amazing, though, because the parents have gotten their mind renewed or they grew up in the church, and now they're having children, and they know how to raise them right. Oh, my goodness. They know how to raise them right. And they're the next generation. And they love their pastor. They love church. They're being raised right. So... Acts 6 verse 7 it says the word and the word of God increased and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith now we're priests right so a great company were added the church grew and developed but those that were there were obedient to the faith and then in Acts 12, and I have to go through these quickly because I have a lot of them. Um, Acts 12, 24, you can just write them down. But the word of the Lord grew and multiplied. The word of the Lord grew and multiplied. If you go back to the beginning in the first service, there was probably, I don't know, 20, 30 people. It grew and multiplied. And it's like, you know, we're looking for the big churches. No, we're looking for the churches that are founded on the word and move with the spirit. Amen. Yeah, and then they'll come, they'll, you know. And um, Acts 19, 20. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. I love that word, prevailed. Um, the Phillips translation says, the word of God continued to grow irresistibly in power and in influence. I love that. Amen. Getting the word to prevail should be the primary goal of the believers in the lives of unbelievers. And, you know, it could be just someone that's new, then they come and they're born again, but they're not used to any of this. And they're like, I remember the first time when I went into some a charismatic meeting and, and I saw what was going on, and my head went like, what? But my spirit said, I like this, and that's really how it all started. You know, because the Holy Spirit will move on you, and some people shut that down. But that really is the primary goal, is the development of the people Amen. for the work of the ministry. Go, go, let's go over to, we could go over to Ephesians 4, you know, for the maturing of the saints. But it, and then it is for the work of the ministry. Amen. Work's a good word. And so um, then in Luke 1, 17, John the Baptist, I'll bring him up again. And he said, and he shall go before him in the spirit and in power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of, of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Okay, what was the mandate that God gave Pastor Jay as a little boy? Go tell my people I'm coming soon. Tell them to get ready to prepare the people for the return of the Lord, for, to prepare people to receive a harvest to prepare people to mature them for the work of the ministry preparing people in heart this is 
on end time ministers who are on the scene today, such as Pastor Nancy, Pastor Jay, Pastor Debbie. You know, we could name others, but you know, you know, this is really where we're at in this era, in this time. And so the planting of churches is so critical because where's the harvest going to go? Where are the, where, where are the people going to go where they can then be nourished up? We need all five full ministry offices functioning fully. But the most important one, I mean, they're all equal, but the one that feeds the sheep, all the other ones are to bring in and help the pastor. And so we need this unity within our leaders with the right plan and the right heart. And we see that God's doing that. He's raising these men and women up, and there's more coming in. There's more catching the attention. You know, social media is quite amazing. Um, some of the things and some of the comments and how everything spreads because people watch us, you've heard, from all over the world. And, and then they get a fire in them. They get excited. They want to hear more. I mean, we had people from Peru, Mexico. Yeah. You know, and we drive 20 minutes to get to church. So, here are some scriptures I want to give you in closing, or getting near to closing. You know, how are we to prepare for what God has prepared for us? Romans 12, 1, verse th 1 through 3, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Present your life to the Lord. My life's not my own. And I don't want it to be my own because I tried that. It doesn't work. It doesn't work well. And then it goes on and says, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It goes back to what Pastor Jay was saying, that he has spent years getting the, the word planted in our hearts, laying the foundation. And, you know, maybe some of you haven't been here 20 years, but then it's easier when more people come in because then we help. We bring a supply. We are grown and matured to a degree, and it, and it helps pastor. And people can grow more quickly. They receive more quickly. There's a desire there. Because you know what? They come in, and this, there's, the, there's the corporate anointing. It's like, what is this? I like this. That's a beautiful thing to watch and to see. And so the first thing we need to do is the renewing of the mind. And you, don't, you never arrive with that because, you know, just like combing your hair, you got to renew your mind every day in the Word of God. You know, your, squirrel, your thinking gets squirrely. So then Ephesians 4, through 25. That ye put off concerning the former conversations of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit. Okay, we got to renew the mind and we got to renew the spirit that you may put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. This is the biggest thing I think is missing or, or hurting the body of Christ is we don't know who we are in Christ. Let's be honest. We get, you know, the, the, that, the, the enemy's greatest tool is condemnation. And Romans 8 says that now, right now, right now, not next week. Now there is n therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And if he can get you under condemnation, he's defeated you. We have to, if I would, for my, even for myself, I got to renew my mind on that because the world will beat you down. Things will come at you. Things happen. And, you know, you might mess up on some things. But we've got to learn to rise up Amen. to our far above seated place and not buy his lies. I think that is the biggest issue. Maybe it's the biggest issue for me. Maybe not you. But it is a huge issue that people just, for whatever reason, you know, because they go mental. Our spirit has been recreated and it's perfect. But get this. Oh, my goodness. The Holy Spirit, when we got born again, came and took up residence in us. 
and we're beating ourselves up because we messed up or we did whatever or we you know what he he'll use anything and everything and like pastor was saying he knows our weak areas he knows our vulnerabilities Jesus died so that we might be free that we might be made he did it he made us righteous you got to meditate on that every day and it's not to be puffed up with pride it is to receive who you are so you don't fall into the traps of what he's trying to tell you they're lies I don't care what the past is or he doesn't care what the past is you know and so because sometimes there's a press <laughs> sometimes there's a lot going on and sometimes you're, and sometimes a few balls drop here and there and you get back up pastor debbie is so wonderful encouraging with that you get back up there's mercy thank god for mercy Amen. don't allow condemnation but if you're dealing with it that means you need to meditate yes. on who you are and your place in the body you are to master your dominion I have not arrived, but I'm working on it because I see I'm going to need it, you know, for, for what we're, where we're at and where God wants to take us. But if we're always under condemnation, he can't use us. Then we become unusable. You are righteous. I like the message translation of Romans 5, 17. It says, if death got the upper hand from one man's wrongdoing, can you imagine? Can you just, I love that word, imagine. Because, you know, with the scriptures, I always try to imagine. Like, you know, the woman with the issue of blood, I got a list of the people that I want to talk to when I get to heaven. You know, what was that like for you? Did you, yeah. You know, because that's what it's for. Use your imagination for the word. But it says, if death can't, got the upper hand through one man's wrongdoing, can you imagine the breathtaking recovery life makes? sovereign life in those who grasp with both hands this wildly extravagant life gift this grand setting everything right listen everybody in here is born again everything is right everything is right you're right you are righteous it's done Jesus did it he made you right and you know that if you mess up forgive me you might have to go ask someone else to forgive you know it's so easy he's made it the simplicity of the gospel is so simple I, I, you know growing up in a denomination it was always a real hard thing and, and when I heard the gospel for the first time I was, I was just thrilled then I got mad because it's like oh my gosh it really is simple and they made it hard because that's man's way making it hard and um, so he has set everything right there is no condemnation and for us to move forward in what God has for us we have to become skilled at dealing with this this is probably the number one thing okay and um, because then it does become easy I don't I, it's not up to me I, I just keep taking those steps. I get back up and I take another step and I use the word. I take what Pastor said and Pastor Debbie said and, you know, it's like, okay, I received that. We sat in this front row and almost in tears receiving correction. They, and, and it, they didn't, it had nothing to do, they weren't beating up on us. It was the word. Amen. I needed the correction. Amen. We needed the correction. Amen. And we were grateful for it. But it was just like, <gasps> I got to walk in love with you? No. <laughs> We've learned. We've learned. But, um, and then Ephesians 1. I want to just read a couple verses from that. Ephesians 1, let's go to it. I hope this isn't, you know, kind of mumble jumbled, but it's, it's, you know, I just want, I want us to, value what we have Amen. you know it's like we are so, I don't even have words for it sometimes sometimes when I'm going for my walk and I'm just thanking God and worshiping him and I just get teary eyed about it too because it's like you're so good like that song we sing he's so good to us quit looking at the things that don't even matter like okay he didn't 
he, you know, he didn't put away the cereal box this morning or, you know, don't, those things don't matter. Don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> Are you thinking, Juan, did I put away the cereal box? You had that look. Um, okay, Ephesians. I got to get going. Ephesians 1. And we can start in verse 18, but what I want to point out here is that um, it says, and this, at the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought according to the work of his mighty power, not mine, which he wrought in Christ, in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. What? What are the next words? Far above. Far above. Far above what? All principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body. He's the head. We're the body. The fullness of him that fill us all in all. And you can go on to chapter 2, but I, we, for time's sake... Um, yeah we are seated at the right hand we are far above and that doesn't mean that you can go around and gloat that means you walk in dominion you walk in authority you have a say on how your life goes you know in Deuteronomy it says this day I set before you life and death blessing and cursing now choose life it's up to me it's up to me to lay down those thoughts of condemnation, of fear, of torment, whatever they might be. And, you know, back at years ago, I always remember the story about Keith Moore and the gentleman that tried and tried and tried and tried everything to quit smoking. And Keith Moore says, well, I can help you with that. He says, every time you light up a cigarette, you say, thank you, Lord, I'm delivered from smoking. Thank you, Lord, I'm delivered. You go and buy a carton of cigarettes. Thank you, Lord, I'm free of smoking. Because he wasn't looking at his failure. He was looking to the Lord. And his words began to move in him. And what happened? He quit smoking. Thank you, Lord. I'm free from lighting up a cigarette. That's a classic example, especially for people that, you know, they'd come pray that I quit smoking. It's like, oh, I can help you with that. <laughs> Keith Moore, the author. <laughs> But we are seated far above. So Colossians 3, 2 says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Seek where your place is, which is seated far above all the works of the enemy. Condemnation is a work of the enemy. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Isaiah 26 3 and these are just ones I wrote down that I like for myself yeah. find your own but I, I really like Isaiah 26 3 in the message it says people with their minds set on you you keep completely whole steady on their feet because they keep at it and they don't quit Amen. I love that one you keep at it and you don't quit you get back up yeah. father forgive me but in both these scriptures who does the setting you do it's a choice again you choose every day and it's not a one time choice you know you can decide you know okay the word of God is the final authority in my life I've made that decision but every day you have to make choices throughout the day that that still is the case because you can get off well then you get off you repent you get back up and keep moving and thank goodness you know we Pastor Jay and Pastor Debbie are so merciful and they're so transparent. They share, you know, we get to see, you know, what, I mean, sometimes people are shocked with some of the things they share, but it helps us because it's like, oh, well, if they can do it, I can do it. I can make it. I can get past this big hump in my life. Amen. You know, they're human just like we are. And we need to keep them covered in prayer because they're, in the, they're on the front line. Yes. They need us to say, we're with you. Amen. We got your back. What, what is it that you need? What would you like us to do to help you? What, how can we help you? Praise the Lord. And yes, you, we're, 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 we're moving forward. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. 
And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. And faithful is he that calls you who will also do it. I love that. Okay, he's, God, you've called me, but you said you would do it. Okay, so what's my part in this and what's your part? And so my part's actually easy. I just have to show up and say, okay, Lord, show me. Oh, okay, you want me to serve in this department and this is what you want to do, me to do and this is when I need to show up and, you know, and, um, you know, and then, you know, I like the word barnacles. Teresa and I will talk about that. Sometimes, you know, the word gets the barnacles off of us, you know, and we've grown and we've developed and we've become more skilled, but then we can help others come in and grow and develop and become skilled and there's the increase. Yes. Grows right back to the beginning. Yes. What, what the Lord said to Pat, we have increased. This is increased. Camp meeting 2021 is increased. 2022 is increased. This is increased. There's more increase coming. Yes. Yes. And more barnacles to yes. come off. <laughs> but that's okay. That's wonderful. Because I want to grow. I want to develop. And I know that you all do too. So let me see what I can do to finish up. <laughs> Prepare means to make ready. And it means, I looked this up, to prepare the minds of men. The mind. The mind has to be renewed. Putting things in divine order. Putting your mind in order so your spirit man has its rightful place. Yeah, and it holds things together. So then in closing, I'll just say, how do I stay steady? How do I, you know, we talked about dealing with condemnation a lot. But... Just a few other tips. I didn't number them, but pray much in the Spirit. Pray much in the Spirit. Oh, my goodness. Pray much. And it's like, yeah, well, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. Yeah. You're not. The Holy Spirit's working in you. Remember who dwells in you. Remember this. I marvel at who dwells in me. Talk to him. He's in you, and he's wanting to talk to you. Pray in tongues till you tap in, and then get quiet and listen. Take your Bible with you, because that's the primary way he'll start talking to you. And then you'll start to hear that st still, small voice that Pastor Debbie was talking about. And then you get excited, and then you don't, oh my gosh, it's been two hours? I gotta go to work, and you don't want to, because you get so thrilled with it. Yes. He gave us his spirit Jesus said I will not leave you as orphans stand up with me and take advantage of the advantage that's in us he said I will ask the father and he will give you another comforter counselor helper intercessor advocate strengthener and standby and he will remain with you forever <laughs> how could we be how could we have a whine in our voice we're blessed. Yeah. This is the life that is grounded, established, as pastors have done faithfully, in the word and the spirit. So um, that, that I'm going to stop there, but let's just lift our hands and thank him and praise him. Father, we just thank you and praise you. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you that pastors have been so faithful and so diligent to teach us Oh, thank you. The fullness of the gospel. Not a watered-down gospel. No. That's not your best, Father, and we want your best. Father, we want you to be welcome in this house anytime we gather together. We want you to have free course, that the utterances that come forth will be free-flowing by the Spirit. And we commit ourselves and we consecrate ourselves to work with you to work with pastors as they stand in this pulpit. We won't be lax, we won't be lazy, but we'll come attentive and hungry, and we'll stir ourselves up to hear the word, to hear the plan, to get the instructions of what's next and what we're gonna do, because we call it the adventures of living a life for you. And we thank you. You have not called us to this place by accident, but you called us for a divine purpose. And Father, just as Moses turned to the burning bush, we turn to hear what you have for us in this place, in this church, in this ministry. And we thank you for it. 
and your name will be lifted up and glorified. Lives will be changed. Lives will, the ones being raised up to go out and reproduce. Many, many, many coming into the kingdom of God for the true church. You said in your word that the true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. That's us, Lord. And we'll receive any direction and correction because we want the fullness of all that you have for us. That we might run our race with our pastors and with each other. We thank you. We glorify you tonight in Jesus' name. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you're encouraged. The main thing, I think, is um, we increase. But there's always preparation for that increase. And you know... One of the preparations I would say to start with if you're dealing with this is who you are in Christ, your righteousness, your right standing. Don't measure yourself by the world standard. Get in the word. And a, a wonderful book, um, there's many, but is E.W. Kenyon's, um, what is it called? His righteousness. Two kinds of righteousness. Yeah, thank you. Two kinds of righteousness. Wonderful, wonderful. And, you know, you just read a couple sentences and meditate. <laughs> Thank you. And pastors will be back, but we will be here Sunday. And we're going to bring our supply, and it's going to be awesome. We're going to be nourished up in the Word of God. We love you guys. Thank you.